What is plateau pressure? Plateau pressure is the static transrespiratory pressure at the end of inspiration during an inspiratory hold maneuver or an inspiratory pause setting. We're going to look at this ventilator screen and we can see the waveforms and we can see the measured values here to the right of the screen. And here are some measured values. So my plateau pressure is a measured value of my peak pressure and then below that is a plateau pressure. And as you notice, it's just dashed out. There is no measurement at the time because we need to perform an inspiratory hold or set an inspiratory pause during the inspiratory phase. And if we look at the waveform, here's a standard pressure waveform and volume control ventilation that it rises and I do not have a pause at all. So I do not have a no flow state during this inspiratory period. Now, as you notice from this picture here, what we did is we did set an inspiratory pause. And as you notice, my inspiration starts, and then I have this then I have this little plateau phase here. So with the creating inspiratory pause, it allows me to capture this measurement. And as you notice about my measurements on the right side of the screen, here's my peak pressure of 18, and I have a plateau pressure of 14. And as you can see, I'm just going to draw an arrow on the waveform. There's my little plateau. Now, why is plateau pressure important? Plateau is important because it gives us a look at kind of what the true alveolar pressure is. So we can use this diagnostically. It's used quite a bit in many protocols. It's used in protocols for acute lung injury or acute respiratory distress syndrome and even sepsis protocols when we are mechanically ventilating the patient. And what we try to do is we try to keep our plateau pressures, our measured plateau, less than 30 centimeters of water. And this is a guideline for lung protection. Another way we can use plateau pressure is actually in setting tidal volume. So if I want to set a tidal volume or target a tidal volume using pressure control ventilation or target I can use plateau pressure as a guideline. And I presented this in my tidal volume video, in a previous video. So I have a measured plateau pressures. And then my tidal volume setting or my tidal target, vo target tidal volume. And this is a target tidal volume should always be based on ideal body weight. So when I look at my measurement, my plateau pressure measurement, if the plateau pressure is under 25 centimeters of water, then I could use tidal volumes approximately less than or equal to 10 milliliters. However, if my plateau pressure is a little higher, 25 to 30 centimeters of water, then I should be targeting lower tidal volumes more lung protective in the 6 to 8 milliliter range. And then lastly, if my plateau pressures are greater than 30, I would want to even use lower tidal volumes down in the 4 to 6 milliliter range to keep my plateau pressures under 30 centimeters of water. Another importance of plateau pressure is we need it for calculating static compliance. So when we're looking at static compliance, so static compliance, that's just 
abbreviation for static compliance. My static compliance is equal to my title volume divided by my plateau pressure minus my set peak value. So my static compliance is going to be liters per centimeter of water. That's the value. Tidal volume is going to be in liters. And both my plateau pressure and my peep are going to be in centimeters of water. So this is when the ventilator is doing a static compliance, it needs a plateau pressure to actually get a static compliance measurement. Now how do I obtain a plateau pressure? How do I get this measurement? Now on some ventilators, newer ventilators, you might see this, measure, this measured value displayed all the time. However, it could be incorrect. To perform a precise maneuver or to get a precise plateau measurement, I need to do either one or two things. I could set a inspiratory pause and volume control ventilation, or I can perform an inspiratory hold maneuver. So there's three things. The patient should ideally, they should be either heavily sedated or um, paralyzed. And with new ventilator software, they just need to be deeply sedated, unless it's an older ventilator than paralyzed. And they shouldn't be adding spontaneous breaths. So no spontaneous activity. So I can still get a measurement, it just might not be as precise. Another thing is it's more ideal to use volume control, ventilation, and with a square waveform setting. So square flow is a constant flow. And with constant flow, my resistance will be constant. And then what I need to do is I need to set a pause of 10 to 20 percent of the total cycle duration. So this is not just my inspiratory time, but my expiratory phase also. Or I could do an inspiratory hold maneuver for approximately four seconds. Now if we look at this, these ventilator settings, so I know I'm in volume control mode. It just states volume control. And as you notice, one of the settings, I'm just going to highlight it in orange, that I actually have a pause setting where I can sort, sort, I mean set, sorry, set an inspiratory pause percent. And this is based on the inspiratory time, so it's not based on the whole cycle time. So if I look at my measured, what my set inspiratory time is going to be based on my IE ratio and my respiratory rate, it's only going to be 1.73 seconds for inspiratory time. So a 5% pause into that is going to be a very little pause time. So I would want to lengthen that out to, I didn't want to increase the pause to 10% to 20%. Now this pause setting is not really to measure plateau it is, but it is mostly used when people were scared of using PEEP and they'd use this to create a um, exposure time and more of a mean airway pressure for lung recruitment and alveolar, alveolar filling time. So I don't want to keep my setting at a 10 to 20 percent. I just want to do this during the maneuver to get my measured plateau value because this could be very uncomfortable for a patient who's spontaneously breathing or is active spontaneously because it could lock them out from exhaling. And this is another example. So this is another vendor and I'm just going to highlight in the corner. It's CMV but this is volume control, what they call volume control ventilation. And I already have the flow waveform in a square waveform. And as you notice, this ventilator also has a pause setting too in percentage. 
And once this is set, the ventilator already calculates a plateau pressure. So this is specifically to volume control ventilation. Now, can we obtain a plateau pressure in pressure control ventilation? And a lot of people out there will say, no, you can't. My peak inspiratory pressure or my pressure control setting is actually my plateau pressure. However, this is a fallacy. It's all dependent on my inspiratory time setting and if my flow fully decelerates. Because as we know with plateau pressure, I need a no-flow state during an inspiratory phase. If we look at the measured values on the right side of the ventilator, you notice that I have my peak pressure and a plateau, and my plateau is dashed out because I don't have a measured value. And this is pressure control ventilation. One thing we're going to look at is we're going to key into the flow waveform here. And as you notice, by my flow waveform, that my flow doesn't fully decelerate. And what I mean by fully decelerating, I'm just going to change the color to red. My flow should return to baseline. And this is all based on my inspiratory time setting or my IE ratio setting. So if my flow fully decelerates like it does in this picture that I just just drew in, my plateau pressure and my peak should be pretty much equal. However, if we go back to this waveform here and where the flow doesn't fully decelerate, my peak inspiratory pressure is going to be different than my plateau pressure. And I'm going to explain that in the next couple of slides to show you more in detail. So what we have here, we're in APV mode. And what APV mode is a pressure control based mode. It's an adaptive pressure control. And this is what the manufacturer just calls it. Another name for this on another vendor is PRVC for servo ventilators or auto flow for Draeger type ventilators. And we're looking at a lot of values. We're going to go over these waveforms here. And this is actually after our inspiratory pause maneuver. And as you can see, my peak airway pressure, my measured value is 37 centimeters of water. So we're going to look at that. So my peak airway pressure, so here's my waveform for peak airway pressure. And here's the measured value. So what we did is we, during the respiratory phase, we did an inspiratory pause maneuver. We did a, a breath hold and we froze the screen, so we just froze the screen, and then we used the control scroller, and we scrolled it back to get our measurements. So I'm just going to clear this out of the way. So we look at my peak airway pressure. My measured value over here is 36.6, approximately 37. Now we were in a pressure control mode. So that's my peak. So sorry about that. So my peak was approximately 37. Let's go back and look at that. So I'm going to go one screen back and I highlight approximately 37 centimeters of water. I'd add an inspiratory hold maneuver and this is to measure my plateau. And my plateau reading is right here. This is my plateau. And it's at 36.6. So there is a difference, even though I'm in pressure control ventilation. And these values are very close. If I go down, I'm just going to change my color to blue and look at the flow waveform down here. As you can see, my flow is pretty much fully decelerating. It is fully decelerating. There's actually a pause here. So we know we're pretty much at a no-flow state. So when we're at this state, our peak and our plateaus should be pretty much equal. And we just showed that by our peak measurement of 37 and our plateau at 36.6.
But this is a good slide. I wanted to demonstrate something else. Here's another waveform here. It's a pressure waveform, and this is auxiliary pressure waveform. And I'm just going to compare the two. So I have my normal pressure and auxiliary pressure. And this auxiliary pressure is actually from a esophageal probe going down. So I can look at esophageal pressures and get a more ideal reading of what's actually happening in the airways or my transvascular pressure. There are situations where my plateau pressures do not truly show what the lungs are actually doing at the velar level. And this is when patients are very obese, morbidly obese. They're fluid overloaded. And there's a lot of third spacing. Another example would be a burn patient and they are so full on fluid that they don't have much chest wall movement at all. And this, their extra thoracic pressure, as in their chest wall, does not reflect actually their alveolar pressure. Some patients that are extremely obese, or even with high bladder pressures too, can push up on the diaphragm and falsely elevate my plateau pressure. However, my alveolar pressure is actually a lot lower. So let's look at this. We're going to look at these two waveforms. I'm going to look at my um, pressure waveform, my standard one, with this um, inspiratory pause maneuver, and I get a measured pressure of 36.6. Now, based on this, you're like, whoa, the plateau pressure is high. I might need to turn down my tidal volumes or turn down my driving pressure since I'm a, if I'm in a pressure control mode and target smaller tidal volumes. However, if we look at our esophageal pressure in this waveform with the same inspiratory pause maneuver, you know that this pressure is significantly different. So there is a 10 centimeter water difference between these two pressures. And now I could basically use this as a guideline to set my PEEP or to set target my tidal volumes or set my pressure control level. So this is just another nice diagnostic, the esophageal pressure in patients that are obese or severely fluid overload. I'm precisely setting, I have room to play. And that's plateau pressure.